Welcome back to another Unlab tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about pre-delay and specifically a little magic trick to help you calculate uh, the perfect amount of pre-delay to use um, in your music productions. And actually this isn't really magic or a trick, it's actually just math. Um, and the reason why we need to involve math is because pre-delay is typically measured in milliseconds. So what we're going to do is break down a basic uh, formula that's very simple um, and you can just type this into a calculator um, and figure it out yourself uh, within seconds um, for any project. Um, and after you've been doing it for a while you'll kind of get a gauge of which numbers are associated with with what type of music that's being produced. Um, it's all based off of uh, BPM or beats per minute. Um, so the very first thing we need to do is break down our beats per minute into uh, milliseconds. Okay. Um, and we're going to do that uh, by just simply taking the number 60,000. Okay. Now that's um, the number of milliseconds in a minute. Okay, that's how we arrived at that number. Um, and now we're just going to divide that by the BPM of our project. And we're going to simplify this so much that we're not actually going to um, use logic here. We're just using the environment because it's a nice, you know, uh, subtle background basically. <laughs> uh, but our BPM is set at 120 for this imaginary project here. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide uh, 60,000 uh, by 120. Okay. Now what that does is it tells us how many milliseconds are in each beat. Okay. Well, let's, let's consider for the moment that uh, the large majority of, mo of, of modern music production in the Western world is based on a a quarter note uh, being the the beat okay so it's going to be something for f time okay so four four or three four time whatever um, so that's what we're what we're working with here uh, and we're going to say that there is um, 500 milliseconds per beat or, or per quarter note okay so uh, most musicians and producers um, subdivide that you know we're, we're talking about 16th notes most of the time okay so we're going to divide that by four again and that is going to give us our milliseconds per 16th note okay um, but uh, reverb is something that um, deals with much smaller numbers uh, uh, sound travels at a very high speed um, that the only thing that we're really encountering on a daily basis that's quicker is light. So um, what we need to do is we need to break this down even more. So if that's 16, if we divide this by 4 again, that's going to give us 1 64th. Okay, and that's going to be kind of the lowest common denominator in most modern music. So if you do this um, and follow this formula the way that we've laid it out here, you're going to get uh, kind of the optimal uh, number. Um, to begin working with uh, for for your pre-delay calculations um, and we would actually recommend rounding this up okay so 32 um, a anything over uh, a whole number should be rounded up to the whole next number now let me explain why and we should probably um, backtrack just a bit and explain exactly what pre-delay is um, what it is is the amount of time uh, between the original sound being made, the wet or the, the dry origin signal, um, and the audible onset of the actual effect or the, the reverberation um, that's being created by the plugin. Um, now of course reverb exists around us um, at all times, that's really how we hear. Um, so it's not just a plug-in thing, but most people are using plugins. Um, so we're just going to break this down in terms that everyone can relate to. Um, and 
you can also say that pre-delay is the most commonly misunderstood, underutilized, and overlooked parameter of most modern uh, reverb plugins. And that's it, it, it basically just kind of comes down to the fact that most people really don't know what it is and, and how to go about using it. How do you set a number to something that you totally, truly do not understand? Um, at least not the mechanics of it. Um, so this is a number that you can use as your basis. Uh, the reason why you wouldn't want to stick with, say, 31 and why you'd want to round it up to 32 is because there's this little sweet spot. It's, 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 a, it's usually referred to as a rhythmic pocket. Okay. Now, if you consider the fact that pre-delay is the first um, opportunity to interface with our reverb in a rhythmic um, way, uh, then it makes sense that we want to uh, find the most precise little pocket of time um, for us to base the rest of our reverb signal on. Okay, so um, if you're going to calculate this out, uh, no matter what integer uh, you end up using, um, if it's if it's right on that beat, it's not going to have the full effect. What you want it to do is follow uh, the original sound mathematically. So you want to shift this just behind the beat. Okay, so this would actually be uh, say 32 milliseconds instead of 31 milliseconds. It's of course it's just a millisecond. We're talking about a very small fraction of time, but it does make a difference. Uh, the human ear is sensitive, and and we have a deep uh, rooted understanding and relationship with uh, rhythm. Even if we can't put it into words, we can tell when something is is uh, just a little bit off or in the pocket. And that's a term that's pretty common. And, and uh, there's a reason why this is called a rhythmic pocket. Those things kind of go hand in hand. So if, if you're putting reverb on your sounds, which you should be to make them more believable, and we'll go into how to actually apply a reverb and what kinds of reverb to use in, in other tutorials. Um, but this is the first one that's actually going to get you um, close to that perfect feel. You know, you have the same reverb, you have the same sounds, and you're setting it to the same beat as so-and-so does in their famous song that you really love, but it just doesn't have the same vibe, it doesn't have that same groove. And this is the first step to get there. Okay, now you could uh, Let's round up first before looking at different um, um, factors of, of this number. Um, we should round up so it's a whole number that we're dealing with. Now you could cut this in half or double it and it's still going to work, um, but your optimal space here is is either this this root number, this 32, or double it, uh, which would be 64. Okay, and. Uh, the reason is because you're preserving that that pocket, that little bit of space after um, the the beat lands. Okay, that's where you want it to be. That's where the human ear is accustomed to hearing reverb. So this is a very natural way uh, to approach programming your reverb, even though it may not feel so natural. Breaking out the calculator when you do it, it doesn't matter. Just make yourself a little cheat sheet. I do it. A lot of other people do it. Um, each time you calculate. Um, your perfect pre-delay for something, just jot it down on a notepad somewhere um, or type it into your computer somewhere that's easy to access and eventually you're going to have a nice little list of the different BPMs that you produce for. Okay, So instead of breaking this down into genres of music or anything, this is a very universal way to approach this. Um, 64 obviously is double the amount of time um, and our original number uh, was 31.25, so you could also argue that 63 would work um, um, just as well. Uh, but again, this is about the rhythm, and it's just like adding or finding the perfect amount of swing when you're, when you're programming beats um, to get that groove. That's what you're after here. That's what you can use pre-delay for. Of course, there are other uses for it. Um, but there are always a, there's there's always a, a, a fairly significant difference between using um, a a plugin as a tool or as an effect. You can use compression as a tool or an effect, um, and this is using uh, reverbs pre-delay as a tool. 
okay, the effect uh, would come in with um, off times, with with stretched out and long pre delays for maybe some some soundscapes or ambient type layering or something. But this right here is the in the pocket um, groove. Um, Theory, no, not theory, that's not the right word. How about um, formula? There you go, an in-the-pocket groove formula. So let's run through that one more time. We're going to first, we're going to translate milliseconds into a minute, and that requires the number 60,000. Okay, and then we're going to divide by the BPM of your music. Okay, so 120 is this project. We divide by 120, we get 500, and that means 500 milliseconds per beat. Okay, and we just need to remember that a beat is a quarter note. So we divide that again by 4 and we get a sixteenth note, 125. Divide again by 4 and you're going to end up with 1 64th note. Um, how many milliseconds are in 1 64th note? And that really is the smallest increment that most people use in modern music production these days. Um, so there you go. Hope it helps. Hope this made sense. Hope it makes a difference. And it's definitely something you can apply to the very next sound you make or the very next project uh, that you bounce. So make sure you do it. Hope it helps. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you again soon. Cheers.